Welcome to the Franklin Crocker Show. And today we have the talented Tina Perot. And she is a singer, a songwriter, and I'm sure many other things. And today we're going to get into one of the things she does as well. Well, welcome to the Franklin Crocker Show, Tina. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Perfect. Perfect. So, you know, I know you're a Buffalo native and that is amazing because Buffalo has a lot of great talents and you are one of those great talents that came out of Buffalo. You're currently now in what? Tennessee, correct? I am. I'm in Tennessee. Yes. Okay. And how long, how long have you been like doing the songwriting right now? Oh man. Um, I'm 34 and I signed my first publishing deal when I was 16 years old. So I've been at it 18 oh, years. Oh yeah. my goodness. You don't, you don't look older than 24 years old. It's coming 34. I love that. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so you signed your first deal at 16 years old. Yeah. I was really young. Yeah. How, how was that journey? How has that process been from now until, you know, when you first signed your deal? Yeah. I mean, I, um, when I was 16, I was really ambitious. I really wanted to get into the industry. Looking back, I definitely think like I started too young. Like I think, you know, I wish I um, had sort of more of a normal high school experience. Cause when I was 16, um, I signed this deal and I moved from Buffalo down to Westchester County and finished high school um, last two years of high school at Sleepy Hollow High, which was great, a great experience, but it was like 30 minutes north of Manhattan because my publisher was based in Manhattan. So I was like working while I was in high school. I was taking the train into the city three days a week. Ooh. So that, you know, I definitely wish that I had like maybe just hunkered down in Buffalo and like finished high school before I ventured, but it did open a lot of doors for me. Um, and I started writing a lot for like back then, like films, TV shows, commercials. Um, and then when I was 18, I got into NYU and I studied music business and uh, audio engineering and production. And that's when I got my record deal actually through some professors at NYU. So um, then I signed with Universal Motown when I was 19. Universal Motown, that is that, that's pretty big for, for 19 years old. I was so young, yeah. <laughs> That's huge. And Sleepy Hollow, it's funny because I I frequent in that area um, not really? too long ago. I have friends that live in Sleepy Hollow. Um, no way! Irving, Irvington, Elmsford. Uh, not Elmsford, but um, uh, Irvington and, uh, yeah, Elmsford, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah That's yeah, right. on the area So, yeah, so I, I know exactly where. I used to live in Edgewater, New Jersey. And okay. I lived in Westchester County as well. I lived in Eastchester. Nice. And, and that, yeah, so I, I know that area very well. So that's, that's, I was actually born in in uh, Bridgewater, New Jersey, and we moved to Buffalo when I was two. So okay, yeah. So, so, but you you did you like your experience here in Buffalo at all, or? Oh my God, I love Buffalo. I mm -hmm. that's home. My parents still live there. Like my husband's parents live there. I have you know so many close family and friends, and oh. grew up there a lot. I I love it. I think it's the greatest city on earth, but you, you think know. it's the greatest city on earth. Go Bills. Yeah. Bills. 100%. Oh, yeah. I'm a huge Bills fan. And just like, you know, I, I'm the daughter of Polish immigrants. Like there okay. was, you know, there was like a really great, I grew up in South Buffalo until I was about 12. Like there's just a lot of amazing like food and like diversity. And oh, I just, pierogies. Pierogies. Yeah, oh, like, man the city that i don't know it, it'll always be home i think the people are so nice and cool and honestly that's why i think it's the greatest place that's really dope i mean again it, it's you know i see buffalo going i mean everybody says it's been happening for some time i've moved back to buffalo like two years ago and there's definitely a renaissance going on in buffalo right now in regards to creativity oh, art, yeah. music and you can see it all all over the city even like through buildings now there's a lot of murals and a lot of buildings here in buffalo which is really really cool and you're getting all these different artists and you know there's a sign here in buffalo that i hate i still want people to take it out it says uh keep buffalo a secret yeah i know that sign yeah and, and i know the oxford pen and put it up and it's just like i get it but i don't want people to think of buffalo only for snow uh, only for disasters which we've been having lately a lot of lately and you know chicken wings it's just like we're more than just that in this city like you said, we're a city of brotherly love. We love, you know, we we help our fellow neighbors. And I want the rest of the world to know how creative we are as a society, as a unity. And yeah. like yourself coming from Buffalo, that, you know, spreading your wings throughout the world um, and, you know, spreading your talents. I mean, I think 
you're amazing at what you do. I listened to a lot of your music recently and uh, it's so just, much. you do a great job. And, you know, being a songwriter is a little difficult because you're not writing for yourself. Sometimes you're writing for other people and they have to take on your creativity as their own. Yes. So that, that could be challenging at some points because they didn't write it. Sometimes when you write your own, it's like you, you build it up to what you know and how you know how to do it. But when you're passing it on to somebody else, that could be difficult. So yeah. any challenges you find within that at all or? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Um, a lot of what you said. I mean, so when I was 19, I signed this record deal. Universal Motown, which was a really cool, like full circle, because I'm actually named after Tina Turner and she was on Motown. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, my parents loved her. So like I I'm named after her and she was on that label. So I released a single called Who's Got Your Money. It went top 40. I was touring with, you know, some of my heroes. I was I played pretty much all of the continental US. Like it was amazing. I had a video on MTV, all this stuff was happening, but I really didn't like the idea of fame happening. Okay. Like I started getting, I had like very minimal experience with it, right? I was no like Lady Gaga level, but I definitely like had some situations where I didn't feel comfortable. And I was like, yeah. I don't think I wanna do this. So I pivoted and signed a publishing deal in Los Angeles and focused for the next seven years solely on writing for other people. Um, so I went from like record deal and being the one that's promoting the music to just being completely behind the scenes. There was so much good that came out of it. I mean, I worked with Britney Spears and Celine Dion, oh. like all these incredible artists and had, you know, they recorded my songs. I got to produce their vocals or sing backgrounds. And I mean, it was amazing, an amazing life. And in that time, I, I lived in LA only a year and then I moved back to New York City. Um, but I just didn't, like after a while you get burnt out. I think yeah. especially if you have your own vocal gifting and like your own artist perspective, you're always taking on someone else's emotions. You're always carrying that weight. And that's a lot. It's like a lot to do and to process. Um, so about three years ago, 20, like end of 2019, right after I got married, um, I was working for Disney music group, which was awesome. I was writing for a lot of their shows and their productions and all of that and their artists. And um, I left that deal just because I was burnt out. I had been in publishing deals since I was 16. And at that point I was 31 and I, I was just fried, frankly. Yeah. Um, and my husband was like, well, why don't you try like starting your own company? And I was completely terrified to do it. I didn't want to do it. You know, I wanted the stable paycheck kind of thing. And I kind of decided to it was this crossroads like do i do that and stay in nashville and like build my own company or do i you know move back to buffalo and just do something else with my life and like call yeah. it a day, you know because i was that burnt out um and when he said start you know your own company he meant like maybe i should write my own music again not just for other people and pivot into the sync licensing world which is when you you know create songs and records but find a team that can facilitate them and putting them into films and tv shows and commercials and promos and trailers so i decided let's not move back to buffalo just yet let's do this like let's let's give it a shot and thank god so far it's been working you know knock on wood and you just hope that continues because it's been really great so that's kind of been the the whole the, ride. The so you talked about Disney. What was one of, what, do you have a couple hits through Disney by any chance? Hmm. Maybe. 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 I wrote a song called uh, Live Your Story. Live Your Story. Yeah, yeah. Great song. It's, thank you. And it's, it's one of those that like, that one I remember getting the call from my publisher in Disney and Burbank in LA and, and her giving me the brief and like, it's it was a very start of my um time with disney and it was almost like i was writing a letter to myself right oh, like yeah. that's kind of i used it to pump myself up to be like no i can do this disney thing and you know it got used it got picked up on disney channel in 44 countries with my vocal on it which was i didn't think they'd keep my voice on it i thought they'd put an artist on it so that was amazing and it ended up being this, the branding song for the princess franchise of Disney. 
And since 2017 or 2018, whenever it was released, it's been in Disney on Ice productions all over the world, which is really oh, wonderful. Yeah. yeah. And it's Green, so see, write, live your story, live your story. <laughs> I love it. I can't Thank sing that, song, but I love Thank the song. You. That's and actually my dad's favorite song I've ever written. It? So yeah. how was the, was it what was the journey and the experience behind writing that? Was it like was there something magical that happened in your life to to get you to write that? Like what what like inspired you to write that song? You know, getting signed by Disney Publishing was such a huge moment for me like especially being this like little Polish girl from Buffalo, you know, my parents saved every dime they could to take mm. me to Disney World, you know, and I remember that trip and just like now going wow i'm working for this company as a musician it was it was surreal so i think for me like i was just really inspired by where i was and like i said that yeah. was one of the first briefs i got when i when i signed with them um and it was just this really incredible moment of like okay i can do this you know like i have it in me and yeah it, it's just sort of taken on a life it's, of its own and it keeps getting used in different things and um, I get a lot of videos from fans. Like I had a a little girl on Instagram send me a video of her um, s performing the song in sign language because she was actually oh. um, so she can't hear the song, but the words meant so much to her. And I just remember tearing up when I got that. You know, like not every songwriter. I, I feel so blessed because like not every songwriter you know, gets the opportunity to write songs in that world that can actually affect people like that. And that's something that means a lot to me. Yeah, it's such a great talent of what you do and how you do it. And you said earlier about, you know, the stress. And a lot of times people like myself or, you know, people that are in, well, I'm kind of in the industry, but people in your position, we don't understand life and what you go through. We see the, the glamour and the glitz. We think everything's all fine. You said like it burns you out. We don't see that part, and it was, and you're not supposed to show us that part. Yeah. So when you say that, you know, I want people to realize that you know there's some hard work that has to be put behind what you do. It's not easy. As you may you may come off to make it look like it's not yeah. that easy. Yeah. And it's a talent. There's patience. There's you know there's a lot of time. Um, there's a lot of networking involved with that. Yes. Knowing the right people. Um, and you know, that's big. And I always talk about, cause I have some, I have daughters and in, in college and I always talk about networking. I always talk about knowing the right people. Yes. You're yeah. going to school to learn something. I get that. But knowing the people within your circle that have the same dreams and visions that you have to help you excel anywhere in life that you want to go. And I think we, a lot of times we miss that aspect of any kind of business, especially in your entertainment business. Mm -hmm. And that is so huge of what you're doing and how you're doing it. And not everybody's going to, and I know we all aspire to be that singer. And like you said, you said Lady Gaga, that big Lady Gaga wow. on the scene, but not everybody can be there. Yeah. You know, not everybody can do that. Not, it, it, it takes a certain kind of person and it takes a, you know, a lot of willpower and giving up a lot of things in your personal life in order to really make that happen. And, you know, it's, we, we see the Instagrams and the fame of everything else and, it's just it, it. I I am just so thrilled about what you're doing, how you're doing it, uh, how you're inspiring people. Because what you're doing, I think, is inspiring. Just not just that little girl that's deaf, but the world. Thank you. Your, your songwriting is amazing, and you know that song "Live Your Story" is is one of those songs that not only little girls, but older men like myself could could really laugh and smile and look at it and like like I said, live your story. We yeah. all have a story. We, you know, all. we all have a story that we have to live no matter what it is. And, you know, that's just an amazing song. So do you have any, I'm not going to talk about the people you work with, because I know you talked about one of the people that you, Tina, Tina Turner, which obviously you, you know, that you, uh, you were named after. Yeah. Yes. You know, and then my uncle, my uncle, his name was Frankie Crocker. He was a big, he was actually from Buffalo as well. Uh, he was one of the number, actually was the number one radio personality in the world. Oh, in wow. the 60s and 90s, so he worked with like Tina Turner's Madonna. There's actually a story I'm going to tell people about Madonna. Uh, when Madonna was 19 years old, uh, her record label didn't know what to do with her. Uh, she wasn't pop enough, but she also wasn't urban either. Yeah. So Frankie, my uncle, actually mentored Madonna at 19 years old. And there's interviews I have. I got to find there on my laptop somewhere. Her talking about my uncle Frankie. 
um, and how he helped her career. Um, you know, Wendy Williams is another one. Um, Dinah Ross, he dated Dinah Ross. So there's interviews with her. Like there's, there's a lot of interviews and that music world, like you said, I seen his life, it burnt him out very fast. Yeah. Um, you know, he was, it was a lot of, you know, it was sad as it is. He was from the 60s to the 90s, but sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Yeah. Um, you know, and I'm sure, you know, you experienced some, some things in your nature and your business as well. Um, but is there an artist that you would love to work with? Oh, man, just one. Oh, oh there's multiple. <laughs> there's multiple ones. Uh, I have so many because um, I've thought about this a lot. I mean, dream scenario, I'd love to write with Sia. Like, I think yeah. she's one of the most incredible songwriters. Love voices um i'm a big fan of the Goo, Goo dolls obviously being from buffalo i would love to write with johnny resnick they were just here not too long ago too yeah yeah, yeah. Right, right. right up there um and stevie nicks i'm a huge fan of stevie nicks um yeah i mean man tina turner would be a dream i just i love so much so many different kinds of music i literally grew up listening from everything to like from abba to like you know the bgs and like disco to all kinds of hip hop to all kinds of pop to rock i mean i literally like everything there's like not one genre i don't like and i think being a major label artist on motown it was so much fun and i had i like fulfilled so many dreams but i realized if i was going to do that i had to pick one lane like i had to pick a style of music and brand myself and that would be all I could do. And I had to like really make that a focus. What I love about what I get to do now is I get to write, you know, kids music for Disney or Nickelodeon or cool. I get to rap on hip hop stuff for sync licensing, or I get to, you know, sing and, you know, rock stuff for different TV shows or trailers, or I can do cinematic music with strings and orchestral arrangements and, you know, really cool vocals that, you know, deal with a specific type of TV show. So like I get to bounce around. And that's something that I learned over the course of my career that I need in order to be happy doing this. Um, and also like balance, like I just, I am not like a sex, drugs, rock and roll person. Like I'm, I'm very boring, <laughs> you know, like I get up early and work out. Like I'm a total, you know, and I had scoliosis surgery recently and like I take care of my body. So I, I learned very quickly. I, if we're getting really real, I had panic attacks when I was on Motown because I just, I couldn't do the touring and the schedule. I was sleeping four hours a night. I was in three cities in one day on radio tour. Like if your uncle was in radio, you know, yeah. like I'd wake up in Oklahoma and do the radio show. Then I, in the morning, then I'd fly to Dallas for the lunch show. Then I'd you know, drive to San Antonio for the evening show and I'd have to play a club gig at midnight in San Antonio and then get up at 4 a.m. and do it all over again. And I was doing that for months on end. Like I just wasn't home for months and I couldn't do it anymore. Like I lived in New York City at the time. I got an apartment in Queens so I could be close to the airport, you know, cause I was just never home. Like it, it that's what I mean by it wore me out. Like I was having, you know, like mental health problems and panic attacks and wasn't sleeping. I couldn't, I couldn't sustain it anymore. Like it just was not sustainable for me, you know? Yeah, and and that, that's gotta be very tough. Um, it, again, like I said, people don't understand that lifestyle is different. It's a different lifestyle. I mean, you, and I remember not too long ago thinking about some hip hop artists, you know, little Wayne and I believe it was Rick Ross, you know, um, having seizures. Yeah, uh, you know, sleep apnea. There's just there's a lot of extras that go into it. Again, we always see what's online and the fancy stuff, but behind the scenes, it's it, it could be dark. Yeah, and it's 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 tough. It's very tough. And I give people like yourself credit because number one, you didn't put yourself in a box. And a lot of times, people put themselves in a box of only doing or knowing one thing. Right. You said, you know what? No, I to be happy, I need to do all these things. I need to be you know spread my wings and fly away to do all these little different things I love to do and I'm, I'm passionate about doing. And some people don't have that courage to do that. It takes a lot of courage. Thank you. It does. Yeah, I mean, I think that my 20s were very like, I was, try I was trying all these things to find what worked for me. And then like around age 31, when I started my own company, 
I took all those contacts I made that decade prior and all the experiences I had. And I said, okay, now I have like a diverse discography of what I've created. And I know all these different people. Let me find the right team that can help me facilitate my vision. And, you know, thank God I found my manager, Wendy and everybody at Resonate. My managers, you know, Justin and Lexi, Josh, Nicole and Wendy, like they're just amazing people and see my vision and get to work facilitating it, you know, and they work really hard and, and we're a good fit like that, you know. Good. Any upcoming projects that you may be working on? Yes. So I actually had a call with my management team yesterday. Um, I've never really done anything like this because I've always written, 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 and I'm still writing constantly. I'm writing for all, you know, different commercials and TV shows and whatnot, but I'm putting together um, a, an EP that of six songs that'll be released this spring. And they're all going to be covers of songs that I love and totally reinterpreted in a new way. Um, nice. so I'm really excited about it. Like just taking other artists work that I love and like transforming it into a vision I have for that song um, and doing it in a totally, totally like total 180 different style. Um, and last, last year I put out a record called Fighter, um, which a year, about a year ago, I had a 14 level spinal fusion. So I was fused from, you know, most of my spine because I had a really severe scoliosis curve that was getting worse. Oh, um, it was a really 10 hour operation. It was really intense, months of recovery. So I put together this you know, album called Fighter, if anyone wants to check it out. And a portion of the proceeds I'm giving to World Spine Outreach, which oh, is actually a Buffalo based nonprofit that facilitates scoliosis surgeries um, in countries around the world where there aren't a lot of scoliosis surgeons. Um, started by two women out of Grand Island that are incredible and they've combined been a part of over a thousand scoliosis operations. So check it out. If that's something you're into. Yes, definitely. I'm going to make sure I definitely check it out and we definitely want to post that and we want to definitely give some more acknowledgement and awareness Thanks. of that. Um, definitely want to do that. And it's funny, the project you're going to be doing, I'm doing something similar to that right now, which is kind of funny. Um, I'm taking old videos. Okay. And applying new songs to them. So okay. I'm taking, so again, I'm taking, I'm, I'm finding dance videos. So I did Michael Jackson's Ghost. I did Michael Jackson's, uh, there was Ghost, and I did Criminal, uh, Smooth Criminal. Yeah. And I'm taking those video, the dance, the dance scenes in those videos and applying new music to it behind the scenes. So it actually seems like they're dancing to a different song, which they're, and they're not. So That's I'm cutting cool. the audio and it's and I'm I'm having fun doing it. It's just so fun to take something old and bring something new and bring them right. together. And it's it's amazing. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. so fun. Yeah. It's it's a whole other way of creating art and being creative. And sounds like you're having fun with it. I've just I'm having fun with this process. I've never done anything like this. I've always released original music I've written, and this will be like a very fun new chapter. So I'm pumped about it. Yeah, and again, I think it's good for this younger generation to understand where, because a lot of times it's funny, because the younger generation thinks that when some new song comes out, it's original. It's not. A lot of times it's an older song that somebody remade or remixed it somehow to make it fit to this generation, but it's it's old stuff. Yeah. And I'm just trying to show them that, you know, the stuff that I grew up with is still relevant. You just don't understand. You don't know it's still relevant. So yeah. I'm just trying to put the two together, that's all. Just I, I have a funny story kind of relating that. So I have a brother who's just turned 20. And about a year ago, um, he was he was here at my house visiting, and um, I was like, Oh, check out this song. Like it was on a 90s playlist I had, and it was Hootie and the Blowfish, I only want to be with you. I was like, I love this song, I haven't heard this in forever. And he's like, I thought this was a post Malone song. I was yeah, like, exactly. I was like, that was the moment I knew I was old. I'm like, okay, it, it's happening. I'm getting older. <laughs> like, I'm like, that's not, it's, yes, it's a Post Malone song too, but like, this is the original, you know, he had no idea. Happens so. all the yeah. time, all yeah. the time. People think that this newer stuff is like, oh my goodness, this is so amazing. Like, this, this is just, yeah, they got it from somebody that was, more amazing than they are right now, believe me. Right, right. And um, but it's but it's funny how music does that because I've always been jealous of people like yourself that can sing, that can write, because I can't sing. You just heard that a few minutes oh, ago. Yeah. I love music though. I think it is the essence of my life. 
I could look back at different songs that I've heard. And I, and I remember when I heard those songs, I can remember where yeah. I was at. Yeah. And it's so much, it, it music inspires me. Um, it's like, it's in my soul. And there's different songs. I tell people all the time, be very careful of the music you listen to and when you listen to it, because there's certain songs that can bring you up or can bring you down. Oh, and, totally. depending, and depending upon where you're at in life and the space you're at, you if you listen to that wrong song, let's say you're down and you listen to something that's going to bring you deeper, it can bring you into depression because you're yeah. taking on that energy of that song. Totally. Plus, if there's no, if, if there's no, you know, there, if there's no horizon in that song, it's like, if it's all dark and deep, it may not be the right song to listen to at that time or the total opposite. If you're listening to rock music, heavy stuff, you might want to tone that down because your, your personality may be very aggressive. Yes. Um, so it's, Music is very, again, it's like the company you keep and you have to make sure you listen to the right music at the right times. And there's always a time for different kinds of music to listen to. Again, I listen to everything. Yes. I, I'm country, I'm pop, I'm rock, I'm rap, I'm classic. I love it all, yeah. That's Stevie Nicks. I love Fleetwood Mac. Me oh too. my good. And Fleetwood Mac has been remade. You Even the, the beats they made, in a, I mean, it was so amazing. There's a lot of rap artists that take yeah. Fleetwood Mac beats and remake them. And people are like, oh my goodness, that's that's Fleetwood. I'm like, yeah, that's Fleetwood Mac, guys. That's oh, it's incredible. Yeah. yeah. I, I love I love that about hip hop, like the, the use of samples. And like, remember one record I heard um when I was when I moved to Sleepy Hollow, actually. Um I had a friend that introduced me to a lot of just music I hadn't heard before, and one of which was Talib Kweli's Get By which Kanye West produced when he was just still full production. Yeah. And um, it samples Nina Simone. And I was just like, what is this? You know, just to hear like that reinterpretation, like I fell in love with, you know, especially that aspect of hip hop and just like reinterpreting, you know, incredible classic songs. And I mean, it happens in all genres, but yeah, I, I love that kind of, you know, transforming something old into something new. It's so cool. And, and Talib Kweli is an amazing artist. He was part of that yeah. whole backpack rappers back in the day where yeah. he wasn't the traditional hardcore in the streets, drug rapping. He was rapping about more inspirational things and, you know, like the, the, the vibe and the creativity. And, you know, I always give him, him and most deaf, like you, those two guys most, together. Yeah. The Black Star record is one of the best hip hop records of all time. That amazing. I'm so sad they broke up because that was such a great record. And also Common's album B, um, super inspiring, inspirational, but like real, a lot of great sample use on that. I think Kanye produced a bunch of that too. He definitely was like a fan of samples, which was in the most genius way um, back then at least. But yeah, so um, yeah, I, yeah, back then. Um, but Kanye, um, but yeah, I, I was so influenced by all kinds of stuff. I mean, I listened to reggae, reggaeton. I listened to, you know, Spanish classical guitar. I listened to pop. I loved the Spice Girls growing up. I love ABBA. I love, I mean, it's like literally everything. I just cannot get enough of it all. And I'm so pumped I get to do different genres, you know? It, it, it is amazing. And I, I just, again, I wish I could be a fly on the wall one day when you're writing, when you're in that inspirational mode and just moving and grooving and like, you know, it just, and then it just really hits and like, oh man, it's just, and again, like you said too, when somebody, when you get a, a, a fan to write to you about how it inspired their life, that just, I mean, I remember the first time I went somewhere and somebody heard our radio show and it was like in Buffalo, because Buffalo is very small. And he's like, hey, Franklin Crocker. I'm like, yeah, that's me. Where do you know me from? They're like, oh, I heard you on the radio. I'm your biggest fan. I'm like, okay. Oh. And it just, it's a different feeling. It's just, it feels fun. Yeah. 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 I started having, you know, when I was on Motown and touring and stuff, just fans recognize me places. And I, I was super uncomfortable. And that's when I was like, I'm going to go write for other people. <laughs> I can't do this. <laughs> yeah. Fame, I don't know if the big fame thing is is for me. So. And it, again, it's not for everybody, um, you know, but again, as long as you know your path and your worth, that's what all that matters. And you're not letting somebody else decide your path and your worth. You're yeah. making your own decision, and that is so beautiful because a lot of times we're scared to to go outside of our comfort zone. I have a I have a saying, and the saying is, um, "It's easy to make tough decisions when you have no other choices." 
Yes. And, you know, a lot of times we are our backs are put to the wall where you don't have any other choices. So it's easy to make that decision of that for somebody else, maybe a tough decision. And what you did, you had that in you to 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 do what you felt was right in your spirit, in your mental, like your mental health. Huge. Yeah. Huge. I mean, yeah. it's if you know, and it's it's similar to, and I say somebody all the time with uh it's like being an airplane. They tell you in order to help to help the person next to you, you have to put on the mask yourself first, yes. then help the person next to you. It's the same thing. Sometimes we try to help other people, but we're not helping ourselves first. Yes. You have to dig deep in yourself to help yourself out, then inspire the rest of the world. Because if you're not happy, how can you make somebody else happy? Yeah. If you're sad and lonely, how can you build somebody else up? So it's exactly. Tina, this is like I, I am I'm I, I'm so thrilled that you took the time on. It's been this has been some time now. You and I have been communicating for yes. like two or three months, probably. Yeah, yeah. And, and we I'm finally so got this together. Yeah, and, and I'm glad you took the time out again. Real fast, too, before we leave off, we haven't really talked about where you're at now. Like, mm -hmm. where, what, what place are you at now? Where like, you live music or just like no, life? Where, where you live, like your your environment, your atmosphere, where do you live at now? Um, Tennessee? Like, yeah, I'm in Tennessee, I'm in Nashville, and. You know, I, I love it. It's definitely a great city. It's growing really quickly. I've been here 10 years, which I can't believe. Um, and I love it. I love Nashville. It's definitely gotten like really too big. <laughs> There's too much traffic. Like I'm, I'm, you know, I love it, but I never, I always think about like maybe one day moving back to Buffalo. I don't know if that'll definitely happen or in a part-time sense, but you know, if my husband and I have kids, that's something you consider just being your family. And, you know, you said you mentioned like Buffalo's small. It is. It's small. But what I love about that city is you have all the big city amenities. Like you have the art museum and cool venues and awesome restaurants. And like the lake is so stunning. You know, we don't have that like kind of lake here. You're close to Toronto. You know, you can do cool day trips like Finger Lakes, whatever. And um you know, you just, you have all that, but you don't have to be in traffic for two hours at a time, which is starting to happen here. <laughs> like I'm literally starting to be like, well, I can't go to that restaurant on Friday because there's going to be traffic and there's no parking. So like, it's that type of city. But Nashville, Nashville has become that big city now in regards to music. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of talent. There's a lot of musicians in it's Nashville. Not just country, not just country anymore. No, and, and, and exactly what you, I was going to get there, not yeah. just country. People thought Nashville, because there was one point where Nashville was part, predominantly country. When I moved here, it was pretty much just country. Yeah, yeah. but not anymore. It is, it is a town where there's a lot of inspiration. There's a lot of, no matter which genre of music, it's going on Nashville. There's a lot of big recording studios in Nashville yes. that people actually travel to to do, you know, major artists travel to Nashville to do their recordings. Yeah. Harry, really Styles, Harry Styles wrote and recorded Watermelon Sugar High here. You know, like there's Ed Sheeran makes records here. Like there's all kinds of different. Um, there's actually a pretty big reggae scene. Um, like there's just a lot of different music here now, which is really awesome. Which yeah. Is, oh, that's amazing. I, I've no, I've never been in Nashville. Uh, there was a time in my life where I was doing a search engine marketing for uh, Verizon and I had the choice of Nashville. They wanted me to transfer to Nashville or Fort Lauderdale. You went with Fort and I chose Fort Lauderdale. Yeah, yeah the ocean is there. I would too. Yeah. <laughs> Fort Lauderdale is amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I chose Fort Lauderdale. But the one thing about Fort Lauderdale in South Florida that you just mentioned something about traffic, it's just as bad. Mm -hmm. And no, South Florida to me sucks because it's great to visit, but if you drive two hours north, two hours south, two hours east or west, you're still in Florida. Yeah, not here, not in Buffalo. You get to but, yeah, yeah. So you know, like yeah. you said, you go north. I'm I'm in I'm in Canada. I'm in Toronto in an hour and a half, two hours, and that's remember, it's a whole other country. Yeah, you realize. I mean, it's not the United. It's a whole other country, and there's different cultures. Toronto is amazing city. Amazing. I have cousins that live up there. So I spent a lot of time in Toronto as a kid. Like I was there a couple weekends a month. Um, hi, Patty. Hi, Jenny. Um, but yeah, so I have family up there and like, I just always loved the energy of that city. It's such a, I, I grew up thinking everyone lived near another country like Canada, you know, like, and then you get older and you're like, oh, you don't, you don't <laughs> like, have Canada across the river. Like, okay. 
So, yeah. So, so convenient. And again, you know, it's crazy because even with Niagara Falls, yeah, we don't look at it as a tourist attraction because like, ah, it's 20 minutes from Buffalo. I can get there anytime. Yeah. But it, it's for the rest of the world. It's huge. It's such a big deal. Yeah. I mean, it's a big, but not when you live in Buffalo. But like, ah, whatever. And, yeah. and it's like, with New York City, it's the same. You know, there's a, there's a lot of things in New York City to do. But when you live there, it's like, that's ah, New York City. I can do it oh, anytime. Yeah. I feel like I'm never going to Times Square. I lived in the city for eight years. I'm like, I'm not going to Times Square. And then, you know, when I visit, I'm like, oh, this is cool. It's actually really fun. You know? It's so much to do. It's so much to do. And so when are you coming back to Buffalo time soon? Any out to do any programs or any events or anything here in Buffalo at all or no? Yeah, I did an event in August um, of last year and it was um, with a boutique on Hurdle. My friend Sue owns called Her Story. So we did a line of. I know um, Sue. Yeah. You know, Sue. OK, I love Sue. My, my, my girlfriend, Erin, Erin Hayes, uh, she's a professor at Buff State. She's the fashion director. She, her and Sue know each other very well. So she is. I see. Small world. Um, yeah. Sue and I co-created a line of um, her story jewelry that's inspired by my scoliosis story. And I'm giving a percentage of that to World Spine Outreach as well. So it's all like stones and crystals that promote healing of the bones and things like that. And um, so I did a little event at her store and we launched that jewelry line and it's still online now. And I performed a song. So I did that recently. And um, I mean, I'd love to honestly, I was talking about it with my husband the other day. Like, I'd love to come up and do more hometown shows like whenever we do visit. Um, so that's definitely on my radar, definitely on my radar to do. I've, I've played the casino in Niagara Falls a couple of times um, mm -hmm. with like country stuff or like country songwriting cuts I've had. But I'd love to you know, just tap into that scene a little more on the performance side. And I always love tying a charity into like whenever I perform. So that would be cool and be have that vision. Yeah. So hopefully, hopefully 2023, 2024, those are things that can, you know, start facilitating for sure. I'm going to tell you something. If you decide to come back here for any kind of event, anything, please let me know. I will help promote it, push it, do what it, kick it, whatever I have to do. <laughs> to make sure that. a fellow buffalonian gets their fair share and gets the exposure and awareness they need thank i'm here you. for you you have a friend in me believe me likewise so, thank you so thank much you. i appreciate yeah. tina i appreciate so how can people follow you what can they find you at yeah find me at um on instagram at, at tina parole t-i-n-a-p-a-r-o-l you can check out my website tina um and on spotify apple music anywhere you listen to music i have a ton of stuff out check out the fighter ep um which again is all about my journey with scoliosis and um one of the songs from that ep was in the netflix trailer for the movie called look both ways starring lily reinhardt um and another song that's the song daylight and then a song on there called get it done um is in current promos for ncis on cbs so the songs have gotten some traction too which is fun um and then check out you know stay stay tuned for my new project i'll be releasing this spring please when that project comes out please let me hear it i want to send it out i'm going to push it and promote it as much as i possibly can thank you so much i really appreciate it thank you and who are who's winning the super bowl bills obviously hello bills by a billion done, <laughs> done. i want a super bowl this year that's it it's happening you know, it, and to be honest with you, I talk to my friends about it. I have a friend that's a, a sports analyst. It's going to be, I, I, if the Bills could win a Super Bowl, it is going to be such an amazing story. Oh, All I of know. what Buffalo has gone through, it is going to be such an amazing story. And you, I don't think you can write it any better with, you know, Daymar's issue. Um, then you have, you know, the Buffalo Massacre, the two snowstorms. I mean, Buffalo has been through a lot for 2022 oh, and to have that victory for the bills to take it home and have them march downtown would be such, I mean, I, it would just be so powerful for Buffalo right now at this point. So my husband and I were kind of dreaming up, you know, and he was like, well, if you had the choice, would you be at the Super Bowl where the bills were playing or would you be in Buffalo? I was like, I would be in Buffalo because I think if they like were in the Super Bowl and won, the city would just go insane in the right way. Like it would be like, like every parade we have all year, like come by, like it would just be insane. Like I would want to be there hundred percent. So like, yeah. I hope that happens. 
the energy is going to be so amazing. And I think that energy is going to spread throughout the rest of the world, not just the United States, but the rest of the world in regards of what we do, how we do it. And it's going to then focus. And, I, and the beautiful thing about it is, too, it will focus more on Buffalo as a whole and how creative we are as a, as a community. Yeah. Not just with the bills, but everything else. But obviously, they'll do some pieces here about Buffalo. They'll talk to some community leaders and some, you know, creatives around here. And they'll see how really big and how great this city is. So, Absolutely. There's so many cool things about it. And yeah, I just, you know, it's, it's everything Buffalo's been through in the last year. It's just heartbreaking. And we need this. I would love for yes. this to happen for that city. So I'm rooting yes. for the Bills all, all day. Trust me. Go Buffalo Bills. Tina, okay. thank you again for your time. I greatly, really appreciate it. Like I said, you could have so, been anywhere in the world, but you're here with me and I appreciate that. Thank you so much for having me. Truly appreciate thank it. You, Tina. And you have a blessed day now. Thank you. You as well. Thank you. Bye-bye.